Hey guys, Sam from West Metal Rabbits here, and today I'm going to be discussing the number one thing that'll make you a better meat rabbit breeder and help you produce higher quality meat rabbits. So that thing is the difference between type and vigor, how they relate to each other, and the trade-offs you have to deal with when you're breeding for them. So first, a quick set of definitions. I've got my ARBA standard of perfection here, which is going to be really useful, especially when we're defining type. So let's see how they define type. The definition for type by the American Rabbit Breeders Association is actually pretty simple. It's basically the physical characteristics of conformation or structure unique to each recognized breed. So what that means is basically what makes a New Zealand a New Zealand, a Californian a Californian, and what makes some difference between a, a Hall and Lop, say. Now, this may sound like it's only relevant during shows, but for the commercial rabbit breeder, Type really does matter because part of the characteristics of commercial meat rabbit breeds, like New Zealand's or Californians, is the distribution of meat. The body type of a meat rabbit is basically designed to produce as much meat as possible, so that's why type matters for them. They actually have a specific definition for the commercial type, which is a little more detailed, and I like it a little better. <clears throat> so, for a commercial type rabbit... Animals are of medium length with depth of body equaling width of body throughout. The high point of the top line should be over the hips. The side profile will taper from hind quarters through to the shoulders. Fullness of body and firmness of flesh are important qualities. Animals are to be posed with front feet directly under the eyes and the toes of the rear feet aligned with the front of the hips. Posing in a tucked up or stretched out position is inappropriate. So this is a classic example of a stretched out position, by the way. Um, so type... For a meat rabbit, basically, there's a couple things in there that we want to break down. First of all, we want to deal with depth of body equaling width of body. So when we talk about depth, let's see if we can get her pose correctly. She's probably not going to cooperate, but I can ballpark it. So this is roughly what you're looking for. She's all, what she, you were seeing before was the scrunched up position. This is more of a, I mean, the stretched out position. This is more of the scrunched up position, mainly because she's inside the house and does not want to be in here. But this is ballpark what you're looking for when you're talking about a pose for a meat rabbit. So depth is the height from here, which is the top line, to the bottom of the body. So depth of a commercial rabbit should be equal roughly to the width, which is, you know, looking straight through more or less. <clears throat> now, why is this important? Depth provides basically a longer surface area, if you will, for the loin which is where most of your meat is. And, you know, part of this too is what the, the showing characteristics want, but the reality is a rabbit that's well proportioned, you don't want it to be way out of control because a rabbit that's way up here in depth, but super skinny is obviously not really gonna be healthy. It's not gonna be enough room for the internal organs. You know, the meat distribution is gonna be off. So that does matter. So depth is one of the huge things with commercial rabbits. We like to see a nice tall arch but we also want it to be proportional to how thick the animal is. The other thing you'll notice with commercial rabbits that's really key is they taper, if she wants to cooperate again, they taper from the shoulders up to the top of the top line. And now the top line technically, which she's not going to do it right now, but we can discuss it in abstract, the top line should really be the highest point right above the hips, and everything should be lined up. And the reason that's important is, again, because... That helps signify good depth, but it also really gives us a lot of loin surface area. Good developed hindquarters, that's all going to mean that the animal, the meat is where you want it, basically. Now, when you're looking at it from above, as I've talked about in other videos, what makes a good meat rabbit, the shoulders should be slightly narrower than the hindquarters, but as close as possible. <clears throat> and those are the general layouts of a meat rabbit that I'm not going to go over here, but... When you're breeding for type, we could get even more specific if I went to the New Zealand itself standard, which I'm not going to read through the entire thing because it's a little long, but generally speaking, it's going to cover the ideal commercial rabbit because the New Zealand is the quintessential commercial rabbit, which obviously is what I have here. So that's a mile high overview of type. It's what makes the breed unique which sounds pretty general, but it does matter to a certain extent, especially if you're breeding for specific colors, like brokens or nice reds like this, they, it gets more nuanced. So for example, the depth of the, the red color, you know, how deep does it go? Is it too dark? Is it too light? A lot of problems people have with reds is they get white down here. You can see she's got a little bit. It's okay for the underside of a red to be white, 
but you really want that to be as minimal as possible. Similarly, it's not really ideal for them to have white circles around the eyes. The smaller they are, the better. So these are all technically nuances of type. Another thing that people don't think about when we're talking about type is just how does the body itself, you know, look? Is it functional? No crooked feet, no crooked teeth, ears that are large enough to dissipate heat, which is especially helpful if you're in a hotter climate, but not so large that they're looking like a lop. You know, you want them to be well-developed but not overdeveloped. You know, are the nails growing correctly? Is the tail crooked? Does it have a, you know, broken or genetic defect? That all includes type. Now, with type, this is about as close as I can get to perfecting the New Zealand type for the New Zealand Reds. She's a great rabbit, but there is a trade-off. To get better type, you need concentrated genetics. To get concentrated genetics, that usually involves line breeding and some inbreeding. Now, certain characteristics for meat rabbits are more heritable than others. Characteristics like color are, you know, relatively heritable in that they pass along well, especially whites like albinoism, but getting the perfect color and the color ratio is much more difficult, and traits related to vigor are much more inheritable. So what is vigor? Vigor is basically everything else that makes a meat rabbit a functional production animal. You know, you'll hear a lot of conflict between commercial producers and fanciers who breed to the standard to try to make the breed, you know, match the type perfectly. Vigor is the animal's basic survival instinct. How easy does it breed? Is it a picky feeder? Is it producing a lot of milk when it has litters? Does it have a large litter? Does it take good care of those litters? How are its mothering instincts? How fast does it grow? How susceptible is it to disease? So as you can see, vigor is also really important and there's basically nothing in the standard of perfection by the American Rabbit Breeders Association that discusses vigor. Vigor is almost entirely a trait that commercial breeders are focused on. So for example, commercial rabbit breeder is going to be using hybrids. The most famous hybrid in all of animal agriculture is the Cornish Cross. Believe it or not, this chicken has no genetic modification. It is a hybrid. That's the term Cornish Cross. So you've got two different breeds bred to perfection on each side, and then you hybridize and you produce the chill, the babies, which are the Cornish cross, those don't get reproduced. Anytime you want to make a Cornish cross, you have to have a pure Cornish hen, and I forget what the other one is, and they have to be bred together. In meat rabbits, the most common hybrid is between a New Zealand and a Californian. Most commercial rabbit breeders are hybridizing. They may have uh, even made their own breeds. You know, a lot of times people combine New Zealand and Californian for the best of both worlds, breed that down, and then eventually have two different lines, and the ones you actually produce for meats are the hybrid offspring. Now, why do we do that? There's a term called hybrid vigor. Hybridized animals tend to take the best of both traits, I mean, the best of both worlds from their parents and bring those traits to the forefront, but only for one generation. They don't pass it on to their offspring. So hybridized animals are going to be more vigorous. They're going to grow faster. They're going to be more resilient, typically. And vigor is basically a product of, you know, sort of, outcrossing, if you will. So line breeding and inbreeding is when you're breeding related rabbits to concentrate genetics. Outcrossing is when you breed unrelated rabbits. When you outcross, you tend to lose some type. You know, you're going to bring in some bad traits you don't want. On the other hand, you'll gain some vigor. So we've talked about type a little bit. Let's, let's show you an example of a more vigorous rabbit. Okay, so this girl right here is another one of my reds, and you just missed about a, two minutes of me trying to wrangle her onto this table. She's the bane of my existence. She is a total bitch. She lunges at me every time I go uh, to, into her cage. She does not cooperate on the table, and she's just generally a pain in the ass, despite the fact that she looks cute right now. In addition, she's not perfect in the way that the other New Zealand I just showed you was. She's Her color is a little lighter down the bottom, which isn't exactly ideal, especially if you kind of lift it up here. You can see the white comes a little higher up. Her Confirmation is not as good uh, to the type. She's also a little fat, but that's a separate issue. And amazingly, she's somewhat cooperating with posing right now. So as you can see, she's not terrible, but she's definitely not as good as the uh, other New Zealand I just showed you. So why do I keep her around? Well, she's actually second generation with these exact same traits. Her mother was a total bitch, pain in the ass, but an amazing breeder. 
This girl and her mother routinely will give me litters of 12 rabbits, produce a crazy amount of milk, raise those rabbits up to comparable sizes as uh, rabbits from litters that are half the size, and she's just generally a fantastic mother. Always makes a nest, never has any problems with rabbits on the wire, you know, I've never gotten small litters out of her, whereas that other rabbit I just showed you, if I breed her with my best buck, at most I can expect to get five kits. They'll be pretty damn good, but they won't, um, they won't be 12, <laughs> and she'll produce them almost the same size. On top of that, she will also, you know, take really good care of them, but she's also a great breeder. If you watch my videos on breeding meat rabbits, you know, sometimes they can be non-cooperative. It can be really frustrating when you're trying to breed a meat rabbit and the doe is just not having it. So that's another trait of Vigor. So with Vigor here, you know, I've gotten okay with the type on her, but Vigor-wise, she's awesome. So, but again, there's a trade-off there. She's got a bad personality and she's not quite as perfect as the other one. So what I try to do in my rabbitry when I'm balancing type and Vigor is you need to understand they're somewhat contradictory and it's sometimes better to maintain a little bit of both and sometimes if you're if you're just going to win shows you're not worried about vigor you only want the best rabbits and that, as a matter of fact a small litter is actually beneficial to you this is why there can be a lot of conflict between the professional show rabbit breeder the backyard homesteader and the commercial rabbit breeder the show rabbit breeder wants to win shows he wants that type to be perfect and he doesn't really care if the litters are big. He actually wants smaller litters because that means the litter, the kits that are in those litters will be bigger. And he can really assess which ones he likes the best. The commercial rabbit breeder wants big litters that grow as fast as possible. And the homesteader is probably somewhere in between. Now, for you, I don't know what your goals are, but being aware of these two things can really make a difference in the quality of the rabbit you're producing. So I have just enough rabbits where I can kind of maintain two different lines. My Vigor line and my Type line is kind of what I call it to myself. Now obviously I want my Vigor line to be as close to the Type as possible and I want my Type line to be as close to the Vigor, <laughs> vigor line as possible, but I find it's better to try to kind of have those slightly separate so that I can produce offsprings with the best of both traits. Now I know this video is getting a little long, I hope I give a pretty good overview, but basically keep in mind these few simple points and you'll do okay. Type is how the rabbit conforms to whatever standard you're breeding to, how the body looks, how its traits are, how the meat distribution is, it's very important. Vigor is how the rabbit lives, reproduces, and how easy it makes your life basically. These two are not mutually exclusive, they can be combined together, but it's difficult to breed for both at the same time, you will not get the best type in a rabbit if you are purely focused on vigor, and you won't get the best vigor out of a rabbit if you're pur purely focused on type. You're going to have to sacrifice a little bit. You can get a really vigorous rabbit that's also a really good type, but it's not going to be the best in show, and it's not going to beat a commercial hybrid as far as reproducing um, goes. So that is why I try to focus on the best of both worlds, but I freely admit, you know, I breed purebred New Zealand Reds. These are not going to compete with a hybridized commercial rabbit from a European operation. They maybe have a shot of doing pretty well in shows because there's not that many New Zealand Reds out there. But when push comes to shove, a breeder focused purely on producing the best New Zealand rabbit possible in the country is going to beat me in any show. Now, at the end of the day, you've got to decide what's best for you, but you also just need to be aware of these traits. In another video, I'm going to cover hybridization in more detail, specifically the California New Zealand Cross. But for now, just content yourself with these definitions, look into them, understand them, and decide what your priorities are. <clears throat> and that pretty much does it. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. I know I kind of rambled around a little bit. It's tricky when you've got live animals on the table. But if you have any questions or want clarification, feel free to comment below. I'm more than happy to answer them. And yeah, until next time, please uh, like and subscribe.